So let's do an example of Coulomb's law, where we're interested in finding the net force on a charge. So we have three uh, charges arranged in a triangle here, a 2 nanocoulomb charge, a negative 2 nanocoulomb charge, and a 1 nanocoulomb charge. We want to know what the net force is on the 1 nanocoulomb charge up at the top. So the first thing that we should do in doing any problem that involves forces and net forces is we should draw a free body diagram. So let's draw our free body diagram like so. And the free body diagram is going to be for the 1 nanocoulomb uh, charge, the forces on the 1 nanocoulomb charge. And so there is a force on it due to the positive charge down in the lower left. I'm just going to call that F plus for lack of a better name for that. Then there's an attractive force due to the negative charge on the bottom right. So I have another force, I'm going to call that one F minus. Let's think a little bit about our angles. So it looks like this angle here is 60 degrees, because it was the uh, other plus charge was 60 degrees from the horizontal. And this angle here is also 60 degrees, the angle between the horizontal axis and the force due to the negative charge. Now, you can already see the next step we're going to have to do is do something with triangles. So let's go ahead and draw triangles already. So we have a force, the F plus, going off in some direction. And what we're going to want to do is extract the X and the Y components of that force. So let's just label those. So let me label this one F plus Y, F plus X. And then the same thing for the negative force. So that we have F negative, we have F negative Y, and F negative X. And in fact, before we go even further, let's just figure out what those components are. So if we dust off our trig, we remember F plus X. When we look at this, it should be F plus, X is F plus cosine of 60 degrees, and F plus Y is F plus sine of 60 degrees. And same thing for F minus, so F minus X is F minus cosine of 60 degrees, and F minus Y is F minus sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so now we've drawn our triangles, we've drawn our free body diagram. So the next step that we always do when we have a force problem and we have a free body diagram is we write down Newton's second law. And so Newton's second law will read that the sum of the forces on the x in the x direction are f plus x in the positive x direction and also f minus x also in the positive x direction. In the y direction, we have f plus y in the positive y direction. And the y component of the minus force, f minus, is actually in the negative y direction. It's pointing down, so it's minus f minus y. And now we can insert what we knew from the last stage. And now we need to figure out, OK, what was it we were after to begin with? Let's go back to the problem statement. We want to know what is the net force on the 1 nanocoulomb charge? So if we want net force, we ultimately want to compute these two things. We want to compute what uh, the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y direction are. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to figure out what the magnitudes of f plus and f minus are. So normally we'd write down knowns and unknowns at this point, but we haven't even labeled everything. So let's just go one step further and write down what the magnitude of f plus and f minus are. So f magnitude of f plus is k times the plus charge times 1 nanocoulomb all over the distance squared. And f minus, it's k times absolute value of q minus times the absolute value of 1 nanocoulomb all over r squared. And we have to ask, OK, now what are these q pluses, q minuses, and r's? So let's list some knowns and unknowns. So we know that Q plus is 2 nanocoulombs. Q minus is the negative 2 nanocoulombs. Well, what is this R? Well, if we remember, R is the distance from the charge that's causing the force to the charge that's feeling the force. So R is actually this distance right along here, this leg of the triangle, 2 centimeters. So R 
is 2.0 centimeters. Or, since we're going to want it in SI units, 2 times the negative 2 meters. So using that, we can now figure out what the magnitudes of F plus and F minus are. So the magnitude of F plus get to be 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. And F minus is actually the same thing. We put in the same numbers. So the magnitudes of F plus and F minus are the same. And that's important because that's going to lead to some very important cancellations and simplifications when we get to the rest of the problem. Okay, now that we know that, let's go back to what we wanted to find. Well, we want, what we wanted to find is what the net force was. So we are ultimately after the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. So let's go back up to what we had before, the sum of the forces in the x direction, f plus cosine of 60 degrees, and f minus cosine of 60 degrees. We now know what all of these things are, and so we can compute this, and we get 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. We could do the same thing in the y direction, so fy is f plus sine of 60 degrees now, and minus f minus sine of 60 degrees. But since f plus and f minus are the same, these ultimately cancel out, and we get 0 in the y direction. So, to summarize, we've now found the net force. The net force in the x direction is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons, or we could also write that as 45 micronewtons. And the force is in the y direction, well, there's no force in the y direction. We could also write this in the form the net force vector is 45 micronewtons and to the right. Okay, and we're done.